This is something that people maybe don't consider much, but what I would say is that spend more money on the lens rather than on the camera. Hello, 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 okay. So this is the second part of this video about what the best gear you should buy if you want to start your photography journey with an edge, with a more creative approach, with something more serious than a normal picture that you can take with a phone or with just a regular snapshot camera. The, the best thing you should do is spend more money on the lens rather than on the camera. And I'll tell you why. My idea was this one. Once you choose what brand of camera suit more your photography style, what you like more, what fit more your, uh, uh, your budget for future, whether it's Canon, Sony, Nikon, Fuji, Minolta, or I don't, I don't know. Once you choose, the best second option that you can do is start spending money on the best lens that can suit your style, for the brand. And the money that you will spend for the lens, it's money that you can consider like an investment, rather than the money you spend for a camera, which is more a cost. And I'll tell you why. For example, my main uh, photo gear is Nikon. I have lens, and especially my medium zoom that I use a lot for work, that I bought it probably 15 years ago or even more, probably when it came out on the market and it's still there doing its work because a lens, if you can take care of the lens, I mean, doesn't have any particular mechanical stuff. So a lens in 20 years, a good lens, the sweet your style and a good quality photo is something that you're gonna keep forever. It's, there is a good chance that probably in four years you're gonna change the body of the camera and then another one. But if you buy a good lens, the lens is gonna be with you forever. So if you stick with the same brand, actually even if you may switch brands, you know, there is a lot of adapter now that allow you to use, for example, Canon lens or Nikon lens even for Sony and vice versa, you know. So a good lens stay with you forever. So mainly lens can be divided into main group. The zoom lens, where you can go from wide to long distance, and prime lens or fixed lens, where basically it's only one focal lens. If you want to get closer, you gotta go, cl go closer with the camera. Zoom lens, the, the typical zoom, uh, the typical medium zoom lens, uh, that it's good and as an average. Uh, uh, usability is the 24, 24 70 or 28 80 85 depend on uh, the brand of the camera and the kind of lens that you buy. for example this is a, a medium range lens 24 70 this is for my uh, sony i also have for my nikon the one that i told you i have since uh, years and years ago and but it's not here in this moment i left it in the studio um, this is a 2.8, even the, my other Nikon is 2.8. I always try to buy when especially the medium range for a 2.8 fixed uh, aperture. That means that when you are wide, uh, the aperture is 2.8. And then when you zoom in, keep staying 2.8. You don't have any uh, fall off of uh, uh, aperture, which also means uh, fall of uh, exposure. Okay, that's, that's important. Usually a good one is fixed, uh, uh, let's say, constant uh, aperture. What, what, you, what you can do with a lens like this, that's a good lens for, for example, for event, like a wedding, party, or maybe for touristic purpose. Basically, allow you to get whatever shot going from a wide shot to a, a kind of closer shot, more tight, without needing to change the lens or having a two body of camera, especially because now we are talking about you starting a new journey. So supposedly you only have at the moment one camera and you wanna start with only one lens. So this one you could use if you think that you're gonna start making some work where you can shoot some wedding, you can shoot some event, or 
you want to uh, travel for tourism purpose, I would say. That's a good one because it allow you to have a medium range and to, I would say, get all the shots that you may need. We may, even, we may even have a bigger lens, zoom lens like this one. This is a 80 millimeter 200 for, a, for my Nikon. I mean, as you can see, it's huge. Okay, but it's something that if you start your journey, probably you don't need this one, unless you are really into natural photography, safari, animal, birds, so you need to get closer, at least to get an idea. That's maybe, I feel, the main option. Otherwise, it's a lens that you can add in the future if you really need it. I, even this lens, I, uh, I bought it probably 20 years ago. I still have, I use sometimes, not much, but I keep it with me. You can never know. Um, so my suggestion anyway, if you want to start with a zoom lens, go with a medium range, 24, 70 or 28, 80, 85, whatever it is. Fix uh, uh, constant aperture, I would suggest 2.8. Let's talk about prime lens. So prime lens, prime lens is the one that I prefer. Usually prime lens has a general better quality build because, uh, because it's easier to do a good qual uh, quality prime lens than a zoom. So if you spend money on a good prime lens, you're gonna get a, a really good quality lens. And the best option when you can, uh, the best goal for you is having as much as you can prime lens especially when you have the possibility to use only prime lens. That is sometimes when you gotta do events or some, some stuff where you gotta be light and you can't bring too much lens with you. Okay, in that case, you may need, you prefer a good zoom lens. Anyway, this is a 50 millimeter lens, for example. I suggest it's the first day you could buy. It's um, as an average view. Basically, it's like the view the human eye can see and it's good for street photography, it's good for portrait photography, it's good also to, if you want to explore uh, photography in a more creative way. Back in the day when film camera was uh, in auge, like this one, basically the, the main kit was buy a camera and then a 50 millimeter. And a lot of people used to have the, this one, just a camera and a 50 millimeter, and you were fine totally. The majority of the 50 lens, uh, a 50 millimeter are usually 1.8 or f2 i feel like maybe some 2.8 i don't know but i feel like the majority is 1.8 then there is a extreme and more expensive version that it's like the 1.4 or 1.2 or i feel like even 0.90 something those are way more expensive and i don't feel like it's worthwhile spending the money but anyway for sure, the quality of the lens in the lens are, are much better. So if it's in your budget, you want to go for 1.4 or 1.2, well, go for it. But for sure, it's bigger. That's, that's normally. But anyway, a 50 millimeter lens is a way to go basic prime lens. Another prime lens that you can buy is, for example, a 35 millimeter, which I suggest. And um, even this one I have seen since, since forever. The 35 millimeter, it's a wide lens, so it's very good for street photography and even for some portrait where you want to give a sense of environment around the person that you are taking picture because it's wider. Usually when I travel and the first thing that I did when I bought the uh, Alpha Sony was buying a 35 millimeter and a 50 and I'm fine with that one. Other options like this one, it's a 24 or there is also 28 millimeter. So, and I used to have even the 20 millimeter, even if it looks like too wide, but th those are nice if you wanna do reportage, for example, you can really get closer to the subject and you give a nice feeling of the viewer of the picture, feeling like he's there in the scene. Wide, uh, prime, good prime lens can, e can even be good for landscape photography or cityscape photography because it gives you a nice wide open scene. Other prime lens can be like this one. This is a 105 or for example 85 millimeter or um, 135 millimeter but this is no lens that you can buy when you want to start your journey. Even if you want to start doing uh, more uh, portrait, I don't suggest going with this one right away. First of all, start with a 50 millimeter and then adds up more. So 
these are my options. If you have money, start with a prime lens, 50 mm first, explore, and then once you develop your style, you can decide to add which one you, you want. I feel like the, from, a, a from a creativity standpoint, consider that always the less choice you have, the more you can focus and work and developing your creativity. If you have a, a choice of 15 different lenses or zoom and moving like that and different things, probably you, have, uh, you start being overwhelmed and thinking too much of what should I use, should I try this and this and the other one and trying everything rather than focusing on what's important, the picture. Another topic is, this is super fast, what is it? Memory card. I always stick with the SanDisk and because it looks like SanDisk for one reason or the, or the other has been the only uh, brand that never fail. I, ne I never lost any picture with SanDisk. Even in this one, don't spend too much money. Consider that the technology is going super fast. So probably in six months, whatever you can buy now, you can buy for 30% less price because there is, there is a new memory card coming faster with a much more space so you don't need to spend so much money. But of course, stick with a, a good brand, I would say, because ultimately remember that this guy has all your work. Well, now that you know what camera to buy, what lens, and you spend the mindfully your money on the right camera lens and memory card, we should keep it. Well, for sure you don't want to be the asshole guy who has 3,000 bags. I need some, okay. Mainly you have two types of bag. One backpack like this, like this. Actually, it's, this is a use to go to the beach. Like this, backpack, you put on the back and side bag like this too. Yeah, uh, I think I have more, but I don't know. If you are smart and you start with the minimum requirement equipment like was my suggestion probably a side bag like this small it's the best that you want even if you gotta go hiking you can put a couple of, of things and just a few extra phone or whatever and then you carry it here on the side lovely you have access to your camera a second you don't need the strap because nobody don't, don't buy the strap please don't, don't don't go around with the camera <laughs> no please please so camera here with the small lens and that's it and maybe you have a, an extra lens you can change whatever you put aside you do whatever else and etc but that's if you don't have much because otherwise it's gonna be uh, heavy on your back otherwise go with the back back Backpack, if you go hiking with a lot of stuff, a lot of gear, but also computer or whatever, you're going to bring other stuff, okay, bring the big, the big one, maybe, like this. I use it, this one only when I, I, I got to go in the studio, in other studio, because I carry computer, multiple lenses, multiple camera, memory card, exposimeter, and my coffee machine, you know, you carry a lot, but it's so bulky, I hate this guy. I mean, nowadays, I wouldn't buy, I just bought it like 10 years ago when I started doing back and forth from Italy, uh, New York. So, yeah, okay, that was because it was keeping all my gear. Otherwise, small backpack for the city if you want to do, but if you want to do street photography or something easy, go with a small, cheap one, side, nice, cute, and you're good to go. Last things, but not last, actually last but not least, software. 
actually last but not least, software. Everybody has software. For the software, if you want to grow up, probably you don't need a lot of Photoshop because you don't want to get stuck with the kind of people who take a less than average picture because there is Photoshop fixing. I mean, just move from the, uh, the area. I mean, try to learn and do the best picture in camera and everybody want to do this. So you, if you are a good guy, you just want a software where you can organize your picture so you also can go back in case you want to see old picture in some way you want to archive and also you want to do some a little I would say color tone adjusting the curve the color a little bit that's it a simple editing and in my opinion a good one if you have a Mac you can use the iPhoto which is included it's free and does already some touch up or what I use is Lightroom I use since really the first version of Lightroom and I find amazing Oh, and remember, shoot always in RAW, please, don't shoot in JPEG. Because RAW, it uh, takes a lot of more information than JPEG, and you can work way better, you can uh, color tone your picture in the best way, and you, you get the best possible between your camera, your lens, your brain, your light, and everything that you put in, in the picture. To see full this video, and trust me, it, it wasn't uh, my intention to go so long. I, uh, I respect that you guys have time to do other stuff you don't want to waste time looking at me but i think i cover a lot of things a little bit of everything but i mean it's something that i've been asked by many people and with this beautiful sunset i'm gonna say goodbye even today i'll see you in the next one para mi amigo